Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna to be getting into the beauty report for July and August. I'm going to be sharing some rapid fire reviews of a bunch of different products that I've been testing out for the last couple of months. Normally I do this series monthly, but uh, 2020, it's been a year, so things have been a little, a little out of whack, but I'm hoping that now finally we can, we can get things back on track on the regular schedule. I say that, but this is also the fourth time, no lie, today that I'm sitting down trying to film this video because literally every single other time something with the puppy interrupted me and uh, it just, it didn't happen. But it is very late in the evening. I've had this makeup on for way too long, but she is sleeping, so Finally, we, we have a little time to catch up. To that point, we have lots to talk about today, so I'm sure this video is going to be epically long as it usually is. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some timestamps in the description box for you guys, along with links to every product that I'm gonna talk about. So that way, if you wanna skip ahead to a particular section or you want to shop a particular product, it will be really easy for you to do so. So yeah, on that note, before I run out of steam for the evening, Let's get into the beauty report. So first things first, I want to update you guys on the products that I tried in my full face of Wander Beauty video. If you missed that one, I will link it up here in the cards for you guys. But uh, basically, Look Fantastic sent me a couple of Wander Beauty products to use in a video. And since I have a ton of Wander Beauty, I decided to do a whole full face look for you guys. So even though the majority of those products I have talked about before, there were a couple of new things that were sent to me from Look Fantastic that I have been using. So this is the Wanderous Escape Palette. This is a 10 pan eyeshadow palette. It retails for $42 and it's got a really pretty mix of matte and metallic and shimmery shades in here. It's primarily a soft neutral palette with a pop of blue. I know we've seen that a lot. I too am kind of sick of this trend. Blue eyeshadow is honestly not my personal favorite. Like I don't hate it, but it's not a color I wear super often. So I personally don't feel like I need a million neutral palettes with a pop of blue, and this is a little overdone at this point, honestly, but I, I do still think this is a pretty color story. So you've got four matte shades in this palette. You have two kind of mid-tone browns, a deep brown, and then kind of like a mauve dusty purple shade. These mattes are very smooth and they're very even in pigmentation but I would describe them as more of a buildable formula. They don't go on packing like an insane amount of pigment. It's interesting. It's sort of like there's almost like a little bit of translucency to the formula. So like they're not patchy and they're not chalky. Like they're not the kind of eyeshadow that you put it on and it basically just blends away into nothing. Like they do definitely show up on your eyes, but with just one pass, with one layer, they have a very sheer diffused quality to them. So if you want it to be fully opaque and like the color you see in the actual pan, you just need to layer it up. But if you wanna just go in with a wash, like it's really easy to do so. They're very, very forgiving and easy to blend out. So I think for people that are like more novices when it comes to eyeshadow, these may actually be really friendly to work with because they are a little more foolproof, especially the dark brown shade. It's really easy to create a smoky look with this because it doesn't go on super dark. That being said, I don't know how well these mattes would work on a person with a deeper skin tone. Obviously, I'm kind of more of a light medium skin tone, so I have no issue with any of these mattes showing up on me. But like knowing how sheer this dark brown is, and this is the darkest shade in this palette, and like I can imagine that the two neutral browns would not really work as a transition color on anybody with a deeper skin tone. So I don't know how inclusive this palette really is. I think the metallic and foiled shades in here actually probably would show up on anybody because they're so opaque. But the mattes, the mattes I'm not so sure about. So speaking of the metallic shades in this palette, so there are actually really like two formulas in here. So I feel like the shade Moonlit and the shade Santorini, these are more of your like traditional satin metallics. So they're very shiny 
and very smooth and have very little to no fallout in them. So these two I feel like you could apply with a brush, you could apply with your fingers. I personally like to tap them on the lid with the finger, but if I'm gonna put like this shade in the inner corner, I'll use a brush. But then these four shades in the middle, so you have Stargaze, Flourish, Daydream, and Sea Glass. These have a little bit of a more sparkly, flaky texture to them. So these, while I feel like they're much more impactful shades, like they're super, super sparkly and gorgeous, these ones are quite a bit more messy because they're just a little bit more chunky. So these ones, you can see like they have more of a sparkle to them. They have a little more texture. So the only issue with this is that I find applying these shades, you can get a lot of sparkle fallout on your under eyes if you're not using them with a sticky base. So I like to layer the more shiny shades in this palette, the sparkly ones, over like the NYX Glitter Primer or you know any kind of really tacky base. That way they have something to adhere to and then you're less likely to get fallout either in application or when you're wearing them throughout the day. So overall, I do think this is a nice palette quality wise. I feel like the shadows blend well. They're fairly easy to work with minus the fallout situation and the wear time on them is pretty decent. I mean, I did my eye makeup many hours ago and this is the palette that I you know used to create my eye look today. and. I feel like I haven't noticed any creasing. The fading has been pretty minimal. So I would say like wear time wise, this is pretty solid. And as a travel themed palette, I feel like this is something I actually would enjoy traveling with because I feel like when I go on vacation, not that I'm going anywhere anytime soon, but I generally like to keep my makeup a little bit more laid back during the day. Like if you're sightseeing and going out and doing stuff. Like usually I don't want my makeup to look too fussy, but I like to have the option, like if I'm gonna go out for a nice dinner at night to do something a little bit more glam. And I feel like this palette is pretty perfect for creating both of those kinds of looks. So ultimately I think this is going to be a palette that's going to appeal to people that generally like softer makeup looks. If you're a fan of neutrals, if you like dabbling in just like a hint of more muted color, a hint of shimmer. This may be a really fun palette for you. Whereas if you're someone that likes to go like really bold and crazy, you might find this to be a little bit too tame, a little bit boring. Then the next product from Wander that I tested out was their Frame Your Face Micro Brow Pencil. So this is $21. I have the shade Dark Brown, and this comes in three other shades as well, which is not the best shade range for a high-end product. But fortunately for me, the shade did end up being a fairly decent color match. I find that the Dark Brown pulls pretty neutral, which I really like. A lot of dark brown pencils I've tried pull very red tone, very warm, which kind of clashes with my natural brow color, which tends to be a little bit more cool, a little bit more ashy. So I honestly have no complaints about this pencil. I feel like it performs basically exactly the way I want a micro pencil to perform. The texture is not too stiff, but not too creamy. So you don't have to like tug at your eyebrow when you're applying it. But at the same time, it's not overly pigmented to where you have to be too light handed and cautious when you're applying it to not have like a Groucho Mark situation going on. It lasts well in my brows. It doesn't fade particularly quickly. Like it's, it's a nice pencil. Really, the issue for me is that it's $21, and I think at this point, there are so many drugstore brow pencils that are also very good that it's kind of hard to justify buying a more expensive one. So will I continue to use this? Absolutely, but would I run out and repurchase this product at the full price? Probably not. And then finally, there's this little compact, which is the Wanderous Glow. It's a face highlighter in the shade After Hours, which is described as a universally flattering champagne. And uh, this retails for $30, comes in a cute little mauve compact with a mirror. And while I absolutely love this highlight and think it's absolutely stunning on the skin, I am a little bothered by the whole universal shade thing. Like, I don't know, when it comes to cheek products, is it really truly possible to have a single universal shade that will work 
both on someone with porcelain skin and on someone with super deep chocolate skin. I can kind of see with this formula how it may be more possible than some other formulas just because the texture of this is very thin and not translucent but it kind of has more of that glass like finish that melts into the skin it has less of like a thick opaque base that I think would you know go really icy on someone with a deeper complexion but not having a deeper complexion myself and having not seen a review of somebody use this with a deeper complexion I really don't know how well it would work for them so I don't, I don't know how I feel about the whole universally flattering thing, but as far as the shade goes and how it's worked for me, I have really, really enjoyed this a lot. It's a beautiful, beautiful formula that doesn't enhance texture. It adds a gorgeous glassy sheen to the skin, and I do feel like the shade is beautiful. I'm pretty picky actually when it comes to my highlights because of the undertones of my skin. I generally don't like anything that leans too icy and pink because I feel like it just looks ashy and weird on me. So I tend to prefer things that lean a little bit more golden and warm or peachy. And this I actually feel like has a true neutral undertone to it, which is honestly rare. I feel like a lot of highlights either go more gold or more pink. And this is kind of like right in the middle. So I see where they were going with the whole universal thing because I think this shade could be flattering on a bunch of people with different undertones. I just don't know how well it will work on someone with super deep skin. And then also there's the price. So $30 for a highlight is a lot. It's not as much as some other highlights, but like when I think about the Nabla skin glazing highlights, which I think are absolutely stunning, those are $24. So if I had to like make a recommendation of one, I would say save yourself $6 and get one of the Nabla because I feel like the end result on the skin is very similar to what this gives, but it is a little bit less expensive and there are more shades to choose from, which is also nice. But there's no denying that this is a beautiful highlight and I have been really enjoying wearing it and I think that it looks really flattering on the skin. It's what I'm wearing on my face right now and I feel like it does give a really beautiful blinding glow. Speaking of a uh, blinding glow, let's talk about some face palettes from Juno & Co. So I tested these out on camera in a recent video, which I can also link for you guys up here in the cards. So these are two limited edition face palettes that retail for $15 each. I think they are still available. If they are, I will have them linked for you guys in the description box. I do also have a discount code with Juno & Co. So I will throw that in the uh, description box as well in case you'd like to save some cash money. But these are both really fun little palettes. So first of all, the exterior packaging on these is absolutely gorgeous. I love the illustrations that they have on here. And then the um, backs are all rose gold. So this is a plastic packaging, but it doesn't feel super cheap. It actually feels pretty heavy and substantial for a $15 palette. And then inside each compact, you get four powders and an actually pretty sizable, nice clear mirror as well. So this more purple palette is the Le Papillon palette. And then the Margarita palette has this really cool blue highlight as well as this peachy apricot blush. So I'm actually wearing the bronzer and the blush from the Margarita palette on my face today. And I think they are beautiful. This bronzer does have a sheen to it, so it's definitely not matte, but it's not glittery. It doesn't have any like shimmery particles in it. It's just gonna give your skin a glow. I think this reminds me a lot of the finish of the Kosas Sunshow bronzer. So that one's like $36, it's, it's pretty expensive. So if you kind of wanted that look, you could pick this whole palette up for half the price and get a very similar vibe. And then this blush, when you first get it, actually has like a little flower pattern embossed in it and like a sparkle. So I feel like the first couple times you use this, it ends up giving your cheeks a lot of glow. Like you don't need to wear highlight if you're wearing these two products, although I put extra highlight on anyway just because. But I think that as this wears down, it will be slightly less 
glowy than it started out, but it's still definitely going to give your cheeks a little bit of sheen and a little bit of radiance. I was also afraid that this was not going to like show up because there seems to be so much of the lighter shade in this ombre pan, but it actually did show up nicely as kind of like an orangey peachy tone blush and I thought it was really pretty. So honestly, I think both of these are fun little palettes. I think that perhaps the Margarita palette is something I would find myself reaching for more often just because I think I would use the bronzer and the blush in this palette more often. The blue highlight is definitely a little weird, but it's not as intimidating on the face as it appears in the pan because this highlight is not um, like opaque. It's really just like a thin veil of blue sparkle. So it just adds a cool blue shift to the skin, but it's almost like it disappears when it's not in the light. So you don't have to worry about having basically a stripe of blue eyeshadow on your face. That's not how the formula actually performs. So it's much more wearable than I think I was expecting it to be, but I don't necessarily feel like I would want a blue sparkle on my face every day. So like, I don't think I'm gonna use these highlights as much. Whereas I feel like it's like the reverse in the Papillon palette. This bronzer is very, very cool and more of a contour shade. This purpley toned orchid blush is super beautiful, but probably wouldn't wear a purple blush on a daily basis. But the two highlights in here, especially this more champagne color, like this is a highlight I would wear every day. So ultimately I feel like these are kind of more like fun palettes than everyday staples. Fortunately, they're only $15 each. So it's the kind of thing that like if you wanted some fun, funky highlights to experiment with, along with some other face powders, like maybe one of these would be a fun addition to your collection that's not gonna cost you an arm and a leg. And then Juno & Co also sent me over their three new Starlet eyeshadow quads. So these are $10 a piece, although looking at the Juno & Co website right now, they're on sale for $8.50. I think it's a Labor Day promotion, maybe? I don't know how long that price will last, but Hopefully by the time I edit this and you are watching this video, they will still be on sale. So the three color stories they have available for these palettes are Goddess, which is a warm toned palette. Then they have Songbird, which is the purple tone. And finally they have Dreamer, which is the blue toned palette. So I actually have not tested this blue palette out yet. I just haven't had a chance. Although to be honest, this is probably my least favorite color story Anyway, because like I said earlier in this video, I'm not a huge blue eyeshadow person. I do like to dabble in it every once in a while, but it's not my like everyday go-to by far. And these particular shades of blue are not like really speaking to me. There's also nothing matte in this palette. All these shades have a bit of sheen to them and then there is a pressed glitter in here. So just be mindful if you're going to purchase this blue palette. If you don't like pressed glitters, one of the four shades that's in here is a pressed glitter. But then as far as Songbird and Goddess goes, I think both of these are beautiful. I really enjoyed the look that I created using the Songbird palette, which I did film a little like make a playtime video. So um, you can see me use this palette in matte. But I also did really enjoy the look I created with the Goddess palette. It's a little like mini condensed warm toned neutral palette. Like this is fall vibes right here. So if you want like a bite sized version of fall, this is a great little palette to have. Everything in here I feel like performed really, really beautifully. The matte shades have tons of pigment and then these shimmery shades look really, really beautiful on the lid. I'm pretty sure I use them over like a um, glitter primer just to make sure that they really stayed in place and didn't have any fallout and I feel like that worked really well for me. So I think if either of these color stories is speaking to you and you were considering buying either of these palettes, I don't think you would be disappointed in them from a quality standpoint. Now obviously with like those new little elf bite size eyeshadow palettes that are $3, you may be like, why do I need to spend $10 on an eyeshadow quad when I can get one of those? And that would be a valid point. I personally have not had a great experience yet with those e.l.f. bite size eyeshadow quads, but I think that's just me. I feel like I just kept picking the dud palettes, but so many people seem to absolutely love them. So 
if there's a color story in one of those that you like, you know, that may be a better investment. But if you were shopping on the Juno & Co. website anyway, or there was a promotion and, you know, you had the ability to get one of these and you're wondering if they were any good, I like them. I, I, I think that they are. So let's talk mascara because I've tested out quite a few recently. So I have the new Urban Decay Lash Freak Mascara, the Carity Bold Mood Mascara, as well as the Milk Kush Mascara. Now this one I actually started trying out quite a while ago and then kind of totally forgot to talk about it. And this is not a new product launch by any means, but I had not tried it until 2020. And I actually really like this a lot. I feel like this is kind of a polarizing mascara. Some people absolutely love it and swear by it like it's their holy grail. And then there are other people that absolutely hate it. I generally found myself on more of the side of really liking it. Like I definitely would use this mascara again if it was given to me. It has a nice big fluffy natural bristle brush and I feel like it does a great job of separating and coating the lashes. It's not the most volumizing formula in the sense that like it doesn't make each individual lash look like a million times thicker, but it does a good job of coating all the lashes so you look like you have more lashes like it gives a very fluttery fluffy look that's a little bit more natural which is kind of like the opposite of what like the urban decay lash freak does which we will talk about in a minute so in general i actually really liked the way my lashes looked when i wore this especially if i was wearing kind of more natural subtle makeup like i think it's very pretty and everyday appropriate it's not like super ultra dramatic and intense but it's not like it was doing nothing and it was fairly easy to apply. I didn't feel like the brush was difficult to work with. So yeah, I generally enjoyed this mascara, would use again, and I didn't have any issues with flaking, smudging, or irritation. I think, you know, after like, you know, 12 hours of wear, you might see a little bit of flaking with it, but it wasn't extreme by any means. And then there is the Urban Decay Lash Freak, which is what I have on my lashes right now. And this is intense. This is for people who like really big, bold, dramatic, thick, voluminous lashes. This makes your lashes look lush. It applies a lot of product. It's a little clumpy and it's a little intense. So you kind of have to like finesse it a little. It has a very weird brush, which I think is effective, but is also a little difficult to work with. You kind of have to get used to how to angle it, especially when you're doing kind of like the eye opposite your you know dominant hand. It basically only has bristles on one side and then kind of like a little ball tip on the other. So it's a very unique design, but it does really allow you to coat every single lash and the formula itself is very thick and it just makes your lashes like wha-bam. Which personally, I actually really like just because of my eye anatomy. I have a lot of lid and brow space, but my lashes are very straight like my hair and not super long. So if I don't have a really voluminous mascara, it basically looks like I have no eyelashes, especially compared to my eyelids. They just kind of get lost in a look. So. I, I need a little something extra to balance this eye situation I have going on. But I would say if you are someone that has like the exact opposite eye structure of me, you know, has like very small eyes, doesn't have a lot of lid space or has naturally like really long lashes. I mean, you may really like having your lashes look like you're wearing falsies or lash extensions. I feel like you could easily do that with this if you had naturally long, luscious lashes. But if you're someone that kind of likes your mascara to look a little more tame and natural, this, uh, this, this may, this may not be your jam. It also is pricey. So a full size tube of this is $25, but they do have a mini available for 13. Now I was gifted this in PR from Urban Decay, which was awesome because I don't think I've ever gotten anything in PR from Urban Decay before. So I was really excited to get something from them. And if you guys have been watching my videos, forever you know i really am a fan of mini mascaras in general just because you're supposed to throw your mascara away like every three to four months and i feel like the mini sizes are a perfect amount of mascara for that time frame especially if you're using more than one mascara which 
As a person with a YouTube channel, I'm always using like at least three different ones. Speaking of which, let's talk about the Carity Bold Mood Mascara. So this is another product I was sent in PR, and this is a significantly more affordable mascara. This guy full size retails for $12, and I'm pretty sure I have a discount code with Carity too. I just have all the discount codes. I basically am one of those people that's like, if a brand wants to give it to me, sure, why not? I'll pass some savings along to you guys. The more the merrier. So with Bold Mood, we're back to the natural bristle brush. However, this has more of that like spiral kind of spacing to it, whereas like the Kush Mascara kind of was overall fluffy. This has more separation. I feel like it has almost like little sections of bristles, which does allow you to comb and separate maybe a little bit better, although I find that this style of wand makes it a little bit more difficult to build up or like get a lot of product on the lash in one go. So this is the kind of formula you definitely need to work through the lashes a bunch and you need to build up, but to that point, it's a little more flexible. I feel like the Urban Decay one goes on really, really intense and then you have to like brush out the formula because it puts on so much to your lashes from like the very first swipe. This one is like the opposite. It goes on light and then you kind of have to layer it up. And if you want a really dramatic finish, you can get it. You just have to put on multiple coats. And this, I don't believe that they claim it to be waterproof. It says it's not supposed to smudge, clump, or flake. But I feel like this performs very much like a waterproof mascara, especially in the way that it comes off. That's the only other kind of like downside to this. I found it to be a little difficult to remove from my lashes. It doesn't like just kind of dissolve off. It comes off more in the way that like a waterproof mascara does where you really need like good oil-based remover to get it off. So if you're lazy with your makeup removal, this may not be the mascara that you'll really enjoy because it will stick around for a while. But if you do like a good oil double cleanse, you probably won't have an issue with getting it off. So I think the final makeup product that I want to talk about today is the Pat McGrath Divine Rose Palette because I never really gave you guys like a formal update on this since I bought it back at the end of June. So I obviously got this in the limited edition pink packaging. This was a birthday treat to myself. My birthday was at the beginning of July. And this is Pat's probably most neutral 10 pan palette. And while it's called Divine Rose, I definitely feel like this is not a very rosy palette. In application, I found this to actually be more cool and smoky than anything else. And I think that's because aside from this corally duochrome and this gold here, every other shade in this palette pulls neutral to cool. And there are also no real like rose tones in this palette, even though it's called Divine Rose. The only thing that's remotely rosy is this shade right here, which is kind of more of like a, a dirty burgundy color. It's still really, really beautiful. But again, it kind of has more smoky, sultry vibes to me. So this is the thing about this palette. I think it's beautiful, but I bought it kind of with the intention of it being like an everyday palette for me. And honestly, I don't know how much of that it will end up being just because this to me actually is more of an evening glam, sultry makeup palette even though like looking at it, maybe in the pan, you might not automatically think that. And I think it's just that at the end of the day, these shades just generally pull, in my opinion, more sultry, smoky, kind of like just those nighttime vibes. That being said, I do really feel like I've created some beautiful looks with this palette. I will insert a picture here of a more kind of like smoky, sultry eye that I created. I also did a video with a wig using this palette. I did like a little fun getting ready with me. So if you missed that video, I will link it for you guys up here in the cards so you can see this palette in action. And yeah, I definitely don't regret buying this. And I feel like quality wise, I mean, these shadows are absolutely beautiful. And the four astral shades in the corner of this palette are truly like just something special. like. They call this Pat McGrath's special formula, and now that I've actually tried it, I like really understand 
what people mean when they say that because the texture of the like Blitz Astral Shades is unlike anything else I've ever used before. They're incredibly thin feeling and yet insanely impactful. Like they just feel so insanely luxurious and quality and they foil beautifully if you apply them with a damp brush. Like they are stunning. I'm kind of secretly hoping she'll launch more of those little quads like she did for the last holiday season with just the special shades in them because the color stories of those aside from the rose one I wasn't super drawn towards so I'm kind of hoping she'll launch a few more and that maybe one of them will be something that will speak to me. But anyhow, there's no denying this is a beautiful palette. I think you can create some really stunning looks with it. The quality is 100% definitely there. I think it's just a matter of if you were considering getting Divine Rose and you have a similar skin tone to me, don't think of this as your everyday neutral palette. Think of this as your evening sultry palette and then ask yourself if that is something you want to spend $125 for. Well, my camera battery just died. That is par for the course for today. So let's move along. So in the past couple of months, I've been fortunate enough to be working with Sephora as part of this Beauty Insider community campaign that they've been doing where every month we get to choose a few different products from a curated list to test out and share our thoughts on our Instagrams. So the first month was skincare based and then in July we got to test some hair care products. So I actually picked up two things to test even though only one of them was on the list. The other one I just was really curious about, so I kind of just got it for me with the remaining funds on the gift card that Sephora provided. So the first product that I picked up is this TLC Happy Scalp Scrub from Drunk Elephant. Now this is the first hair care product that I'm trying from Drunk Elephant. I have tried some of their skincare before, and I have to say, this is probably the best scalp scrub that I've ever tried. And I've tried a few by this point. Now my hair and scalp situation is kind of weird. I feel like my scalp is oily and dehydrated. Like my roots of my hair get greasy very quickly, but my scalp also gets flaky very easily. And if I use a lot of dry shampoo, it just makes it that much worse. So scalp scrubs for me are really nice to kind of help to clear out product buildup, dead skin, etc. make my scalp eh, happy again. And this particular scrub I feel like has a lot of things going for it that many other scrubs don't. So first of all, there is the packaging design on this, which is similar to the Kristen S scalp scrub that I also really liked in that it has a nozzle tip applicator. I feel like every scalp scrub should be packaged like this. It just makes a million times more sense. So the way you would apply this product is you would part your hair and then you could squeeze the product directly onto your scalp and then you can create sections and then apply it to each section. That way you're getting the scrub on your scalp. If you've ever had to take a handful of scalp scrub from a like tub and try to put it on your scalp, you basically only get it in the first like three inches of your hair and can't get it anywhere near your scalp and it's infuriating. So this makes it much, much easier. They also recommend you apply this to a dry scalp, not a damp scalp, which I also feel like makes it easier because once your hair is wet, it kind of sticks to itself more and then it's harder to really get in there. Obviously, like once you apply this and then wet your hair, you can kind of lather it and continue to scrub and massage. But like for the initial application, putting it on dry hair, way easier. Finally, the really big like kicker of this that's truly unique to any other scalp scrub I've tried is that this has a blend of 10% AHA and BHA along with plant oils to nourish the scalp. So this is providing you with both physical and chemical exfoliation for your scalp, which I have not seen yet and I think is genius. You definitely can feel this tingle like just a little bit, like you can feel those chemical exfoliants working the first couple of minutes after you apply this, 
but it's not super uncomfortable and the sensation does go away after it's been on your head for like five minutes. So you're basically supposed to apply this to your scalp. You're supposed to leave it on for 10 minutes and then you rinse it out and then you follow up with your shampoo and conditioner. I do find that that is so necessary. You need to wash this out with shampoo. Otherwise, you're going to have tons of fine little granules all throughout your hair. This does not use like a sugar-based scrub or something that dissolves. It uses like a really, really, really fine powder exfoliant. It's super satisfying. It doesn't seem to be irritating to the scalp at all, at least in my experience. But you need to like wash it out of your hair. Otherwise, it's like having really, really fine sand in there. And while this also has no sulfates, silicones, essential oils, fragrance, dyes, or drying alcohols, it smells delicious. Like it smells like sweet almond oil. And I think there is sweet almond oil in this formula. Yes, there is. And that's probably why it smells really, really yummy, but not in an overpowering, like it's full of fragrance kind of way. It's just like the natural scent of the product smells really good. So yeah, 100,000% would recommend this if you are suffering with a dry flaky scalp or if you are having issues with product buildup and a lack of volume in your hair. I feel like after I use this, my hair definitely has a lot more body just because it's breaking down any kind of gunk that's on my scalp that's kind of weighing everything down. The one word of caution, and it does have a warning on the bottle, but I feel like it's gonna be a little counterintuitive because this is a hair product, is that it says use a sunscreen daily while using this product because AHAs and BHAs do make you more photosensitive. So with this being a scalp scrub, you may not necessarily think to be putting sunscreen on your scalp. So what I would recommend, if you're gonna be using this, especially if you're gonna be outside at all, Wear a hat on your head to protect your scalp from the sun. Because let me tell you, getting a burn on your scalp, it's not fun. It's super unpleasant. I religiously wear a floppy hat when I'm outside. And part of that is just I have really dark hair. So if you, if you have dark hair, you understand the struggle in the sun. My head gets physically so, so hot to the touch. Like it absorbs so much heat from the sun that it becomes like uncomfortable basically to sit out in the sun like I get a headache because my head gets way too hot so I have to wear a hat kind of all the time when I'm outside to not get a migraine. Now the one other downside to this product is that it is a little pricey it's $36 for six fluid ounces and I feel like I am churning through this like you only need to use it like once a week but I feel like you need to use a lot of product to cover your entire scalp, or at least that's been my experience. So I feel like I'm not gonna get a ton of uses out of this. So if I'm using it religiously every single week, I maybe would get two months use out of this product. So just as something to consider, maybe you don't need to use it year round, but if your scalp gets out of whack with the changing seasons or it's really dry in the winter, maybe this is something that's worth checking out and investing in. The other hair care product that I purchased with my little Sephora gift card was the uh, Briogeo Be Gentle Be Kind uh, Avocado and Kiwi Mega Moisture Superfood Mask. So this is their newest launch as far as like hair care masks go. And let me tell you guys, this smells divine. It smells like Laffy Taffy or like some kind of fruity candy. It's very sweet and yummy smelling. So if you're into scents and you're into especially sweet fruity scents, you probably would be all over this. Now, this is a protein-free hair mask. It is supposed to be formulated with a bunch of really emollient ingredients to make your hair softer and more manageable. So it has avocado, kiwi, and spinach in it. There are no silicones in this product because all Briogeo products are silicone and sulfate free. And it theoretically can be used by people with all hair types. Now, having also tried their original Don't Despair Repair Mask, I have to say formula wise, I think I prefer that mask to this one just because of the texture of my hair. My hair is very straight. My hair is very fine, but I have a good amount of it. So my hair can get weighed down fairly easily. I also don't color treat my hair at all. So I have 
virgin hair. So my hair is not super porous. It's not super dry to begin with or damaged. So I feel like I don't necessarily need a mask that's this heavy duty. I just was curious and it sounded like it would smell amazing, which it does. So I just figured I would give it a go. But I think if I was going to repurchase a mask from Briogeo, I probably would get the Don't Despair Repair because that one is like a little lighter in consistency and worked really, really well for my hair. This, I feel like after I rinse it out, I do feel like my hair tends to be quite a bit more flat than usual. It is very, very soft and it smells incredible. So this is the kind of thing that like, let's say I'll do kind of like a, a DIY spa at home hair little therapy session. I'll use my scalp scrub. I'll wash that out with my Crest and S micellar shampoo. Then I'll go in with my Briogeo hair mask. Let that sit for like 20 minutes, rinse it out. And my hair will feel really soft. It'll be super shiny. But if I use this with the scalp scrub, even though the scalp scrub gives me a little more oomph, I feel like this kind of just like weighs it back down again. So take that as you will. I think if you had really coarse, curly hair, frizzy hair, you may really, really enjoy this product because it will just kind of like slick everything down and make everything super smooth and like nourished. Speaking of Briogeo, I also have been using their Be Gentle, Be Kind Matcha and Apple Replenishing Superfood Conditioner and Shampoo lately. These are not new, they've been around for a while, but they're newer to me. And I really like this line. As much as I love the banana shampoo, the way that it smells, I do think that one is drying out my hair. I know a lot of other people have mentioned kind of the same thing. And I've noticed that since I stopped using that and switched to the matcha and apple, I feel like my scalp has been a little less dry and I haven't been needing the scalp scrub quite as much. So maybe there's something in the banana one that just doesn't like work so well with me. But this is really nice, super gentle yet effective, gets my hair nice and clean, smells delicious like a like fresh cut Granny Smith apple, it's super yummy. And the conditioner while being rich is not as heavy as the mask, doesn't weigh my hair down so much. So this while being kind of pricey is nice. So speaking of things that are expensive, let's talk about some candles. So maybe about a month or so ago now, I got an email from Otherland asking if I'd be interested in trying out a few of their candles. And I uh, very enthusiastically said yes, because I am a freak for candles. I love burning candles. I always have, I have way too many of them in my house at any given time, but I, I have zero shame about it. I don't know, there's just something very like cozy and relaxing about burning a candle. And I just love being in a home that smells good and as time has gone on I definitely have found myself being more and more drawn towards luxury candles. I just A like the idea of burning something that's cleaner for my home and B really appreciate the scent throw and the scent complexity of higher end candles. So other land is definitely in that luxury sphere. All of their candles are hand poured. They're made from a blend of coconut and soy wax. They use 100% cotton wicks, so they're going to give you a really clean burn. They also have tons of scent throw. They use really potent, high quality fragrance oils, so you're going to get a really, really great aromatic experience. And the actual like scent blends that they come up with are a little more unique, a little more elevated than what you might find at like Target or Bed Bath & Beyond. And of course, as I'm looking at their website now, I see that they just launched their fall collection and I am so into it. Oh my God, there are a few things here that sound incredible. There's one called cardamom milk that I'm like, I, I might need to try that. But before I get myself distracted, let me tell you about the candles that I do have. So they asked me to pick out three candles from their like signature collection. So these are available all the time year round. And the three that I got were Daybed, uh, Chandelier, and Rattan. So first, before I get into the actual scents themselves, we need to talk a minute about like the packaging and presentation of these candles. So the individual candles themselves are absolutely beautiful. They have these really nice white, I think this is glass, glass or ceramic. 
uh, vessels with these really beautifully designed stickers on them and then they do have lids although these are kind of like a paper cardboard type material so this is not something you'd want to like put back on top of the candle when it's still burning you want to make sure that the flame has long since been extinguished but when you buy a trio of these candles they come in this beautiful box along with like a little box of matches the presentation was absolutely so so stunning like that would be like the ultimate bougie housewarming gift to send to someone like if you wanted to treat somebody you really really liked you could buy them a trio of otherland candles that would be that would be a statement now they are a little bit pricey so each candle individually is 36 dollars, and that's for an eight ounce candle but the trio, which I believe you can customize what three cents you want in there, is $89. So you are saving a little bit by buying three at a time and you do get that really nice, pretty presentation as well. So let's talk the individual scents. So first is Daybed. So this one is described as love notes, soft petals, English gardens, rose water, pink velvet, gentle sunshine, second dates, silk sheets, open windows, secret admirers. Ooh la la. Basically, this is a very, almost a little bit powdery floral scent. Very fresh, springy, girly to me. But it has like a little bit of an undertone of grassy freshness to it. Like it's not overly perfumey. This one I have burned and I did enjoy it for sure. This to me would be a really nice like bedroom candle. Like I feel like this reminds me of a big beautiful bedroom in the springtime with the windows open and the breeze blowing in like it just has those very crisp light fresh vibes to it but it's also like a little bit feminine so yeah this one I definitely enjoy it's maybe not the most seasonally appropriate with us going into fall so like I may save this guy for the spring weather but we shall see. Then there is Chandelier, which is kind of like their more bougie, expensive smelling scent. So this one is reminiscent of secret passages, lace kerchiefs, lingering guests, polished floors, starlight, champagne toasts, crystal vases, antique brass, spiral staircases. Now this is the only one I haven't burned yet, so I'm very excited to do so because the cold throw on this is really interesting. I was watching Lauren May Beauty the other day and she actually was also talking about these candles because she was sent some as well. And she described Chandelier as new car scent. And now that I'm smelling it again after she said that, I'm like, yeah, it does kind of smell like a new car, but like not in a bad way. This is perhaps one of the most difficult scents for me to describe because it is so unique because it's not fruity it's not floral it's not overly musky like it's clean but it's not that like green type of clean fresh scent and it doesn't smell like laundry either like it does just somehow evoke like this sense of being like in a ballroom where you'd have one of those crazy big fancy crystal chandeliers like ah i don't i don't know I, it does have that slight fruitiness of like that champagne but it almost has like a leatheriness to it as well and almost like a slight woodiness. It's very, very interesting. I'm really looking forward to burning this and seeing what the hot throw is like because sometimes it can be a little bit different. But I feel like this is the kind of candle that like if you're having guests over and you're having like a fancy dinner party and you wanted your house to smell super luxurious and bougie and amazing, this might give you those vibes. And then the last scent that I have is rattan. And this one is described as being reminiscent of suntan skin, ancient temples, sandalwood, far flung islands, glowing lanterns, bamboo, bungalows, leather sandals. And this one, I feel like I like it more now that I've burned it and I really enjoyed the warm scent throw. The first time I smelled this, when I got it, I was like, ooh, I don't know if I like that as much as I thought I was going to. Because the cold throw, like when you first smell it, has a strong, almost like cologne type of scent to it. You get this sort of spicy man type scent. Does that make any sense? It just kind of hits you in a nose in a way that's like a little bit sharp. 
but I feel like they're undertones of like creamy vanilla-y type warmth underneath that come through more when you actually burn the candle. But yeah, this one is definitely a more warm scent. If you're not someone that likes those very warm, spicy type fragrances, this is not one for you. I mean, sandalwood, I think, is one of the predominant notes that's in here, and sandalwood very much has those vibes. So if you don't like sandalwood, I would steer clear of rattan. And also, given how potent the throw is on this candle, I would say maybe burn this one in a bigger space. I think if you burn this in like a small bathroom or something like that, it may be a little much. So yeah, definitely very pleased with my first Otherland candle experience. The scent throw on these have been excellent. They burn really beautifully, very clean. You just have to remember to trim your wicks. Every time you burn a candle, you need to trim the wick and get that like burnt wick out of the candle. That way you won't end up with like soot everywhere. If you're seeing a lot of smoke and soot from your candles, it's because you're not trimming your wicks properly. So make, make sure you do that. But yeah, I definitely would 100% try other candles from them in the future because I think that the quality is really there. So yeah, I think that is about it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on all of these products. If you did, I hope you will consider giving this video a thumbs up. I always appreciate your support so, so much. And if you're new and this is your first time here to my channel, I hope you will consider clicking that subscribe button before you go. That way yours truly will uh, show up in your subscription feed and we can hang out together again in the future. So on that note, it is now uh, way past my bedtime. So I'm gonna go take off my makeup and get in my pajamas, but I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys. <laughs>